Hey guys, it's Will Patterson here and welcome to another Illustrator tutorial video. Now last time, I did say I was going to do a certain video tutorial on a certain sort of uh, typography or thing that I made myself. Uh, but I can't yet show that just for my own reasons of uh, working on it still and working on different parts of it. And I want to make sure it's all finished before I show you how to do anything. And there goes in my phone. And basically today I'm going to be showing you how to use or how to even do typography placement with this sort of style. So this is sort of like a handwritten vintage style text. And it's a very uh, sort of popular style nowadays to use. And I'm going to show you a little bit about it. So first off, you can see I've got humility up here. Now this is a C.S. Lewis quote that's not yet finished. It's supposed to say, humility is not thinking of yourself, uh, thinking less of yourself. It's uh, thinking of yourself less. So that's supposed to be what it's supposed to say. So like, I'm going to just show you how I did this part and then I might do a follow up video to show you how I finished it. Okay, so I used uh, text in here and as you can see up here I've got an envelope warp. So that, that's a bit of a different story compared to a lot of things. But basically I'm going to show you how I did it. So I'm going to make a new artboard and I'm going to write, if I can actually do it correctly, I'm going to write humility. If you can spell it right as well. I don't know what font that is, so I'm going to just pick another font um, because I don't actually know which one it is. So I'm going to use something like oh, maybe this. Let's have a look. Let's go into type, change case, uppercase. I don't really like that. Let's choose Abraham because that's always a good, uh, a good font to use. Okay, so in this I've got um, a very condensed sort of slab font here, and it's a really nice font that I like to use. So with Abraham, uh, these fonts are really good to do curves in them. Now the way to do this curve and to make it look handwritten is I use an envelope distort. So if I highlight it over here, you'll most likely see up here this sort of warp sort of thing. It looks like the warp from Photoshop. But if you click that, you'll be able to go into your warp options over here. And basically you can choose from loads of different warp options here from like everything you need. And you can change the values of them uh, like so. So I'm going to choose because I want it to um, I want to push it up from the bottom. So I'm going to choose arc lower. And as you can see, if I bend it, it'll well, literally arc lower. But I want to move it up so we get this sort of weird. Uh, so it's coming up a little bit. I'm going to press OK. Now, now we've got this envelope warp. We can go up here and we can actually change the warp, or we can change the actual text, which is a very good thing. You don't need to expand it. It's still live editable text. But I want to make sure that this, or I want to make it come down a bit more. Um, and you can't do that in the warp. So what we need to do is press A to get to a direct selection tool. I'm going to highlight this anchor point down here. Press shift and hold shift down to highlight this one. Now we can drag them down by holding shift. Like so, which will give us uh, this sort of look here. Or we can just use our arrow, the shift in the arrow tool to make it a bit easier for ourselves. Now we've got that, it's all warped correctly. And that is how you do the first part of it, because all you need to do now is to, to make it set in stone to add more effects. You just go highlight it and go to object and go to expand and make sure object and fill is selected and press OK. And that is all expanded. So now we've got this sort of cool looking thing here. Now, if I put a ruler down, we can see that there's a problem between here and here, which I can focus on later on because um, it's just a tutorial that I'm doing uh, right now. Actually, I'll, I'll sort it out now. I might as well. Uh, let's get a thing here. Let's change this anchor point down here. Let's bring this down a bit. Like so, and that's how you change it. And then we do the same object expand. Okay. Now that is a live shape and it's a group, um, which is cool. And you can change the little bits of group. Okay, and this bit here, we need the graphics tablet for this bit here. So I'm going to just quickly grab my graphics tablet. I should have it already, but I do not because I haven't been working on it uh, too much. I don't even know if it's switched on. It is not switched on, so I'm not going to grab the graphics tablet. But I'll actually show you uh, very easily with uh, just the mouse. If I just grab the mouse back. Okay, so what we use here is the blob brush tool. Now the blob brush tool is really cool because it, it gives you basically the drawing capabilities um, within Illustrator. So the way to get it is I go shift and B or you can always just go under the pencil to get it. Now make sure first off is you double click on the blob brush tool uh, thing here to get the dialog box up. 
we want it on accurate we don't want it on smooth and I want the variation to be sort of uh, nothing um, I'll just go back to that actually now, I don't want the variation to be on anything the size is 2 and we, we can change this if we wanted to to change the roundness and we can change the, the way it looks but we don't want to do that uh, because we, we're alright with this okay the next thing we want to do is we want to create like a little centerpiece here so I'm going to just uh, zoom in a little bit go to my blood brush tool and I'm just going to create a little little drafted circle now this is what we don't want the circle to be perfect that's why we're doing it like this and as you can see here these I'm going to create um, a line to, uh, to the right of it and then I'm just going to create more and more lines uh, and I'll show you how so I'm going to create this line here uh, by holding down shift we can stay on this axis here oops sorry this is the trouble about using a mouse I should have really picked up my graphics tab beforehand okay so we've got that there on the guide so I know exactly where it is and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the 45 degree angled one up here like so by holding shift I'm going to then copy this by uh, alting it and then I'm going to press E and I'm going to just work around to get the uh, thing that I want and then I'm going to press E, shift and E to delete some of that like so I might even just flip this around a little bit because um, I want it to be the other way around to make it look a bit different so now we've got that the next thing we want to do is like it's not perfect or anything but we want to go ahead and create a vertical one uh, so straight down the line vertical with shift and then now we can sort of separate uh, these like so now the next thing you want to do is you want to highlight all of these so I'm going to just select all these three and shift select that one shift select that one again and then I'm going to press command G to group them I'm going to press O which will give us the reflection tool and in the center of the circle I'm going to press alt and then click and then I'm going to press preview which will give us the reflect options here now as you can see um, I'm flipping it on the vertical axis it's a bit different because technically I'm flipping it on the horizontal axis but if you see the diagram here it will tell us that when we flip it it's flipping over the actual vertical uh, axis I'm going to press uh, copy now the reason why I left this one at the top up here and I'll zoom in the reason why I left uh, I, I highlighted all these is so I could line them up like this so I can tell that this top bit here is in line so now we have a perfect sort of divider it doesn't look too great so what we're going to do is I'm just going to highlight it and I'm going to press unite which will give us a group and that's all united and then you can edit it even more from here by highlighting it and free transforming it down and uh, just doing whatever so I'm going to highlight them all again and press command G and we've got that and that is how you create the first part of it which is sort of the uh, text divider which is a really cool thing the next part of it is quite uh, easy really I just writ it out on here and it didn't really take much to do I just wrote it out with the graphics tablet which was uh, quite fun and I just did it in capitals now remember when you're doing things on the graphics tablet or when you're doing uh, work like this you don't want it to be perfect looking now that's the idea because I'm not even finished with this thinking part here but all I did was I took um, the pencil I've even gone wrong a bit here but um, I, I went with a font I believe it's called Lav Lavendier or whatever and then I went around it uh, with the pencil in the corners uh, to round them off and then I just, as you can see, I've made a few mistakes, but they need to be cleared up. And then I just made some flourishes around here to make it look cool. This text divider here, I need the graphics tablet to do, so I can't show you that in this video. Um, but the stars here are a really cool way of dividing your text. The same thing with these, I just went ahead and I believe I just used the graphics tablet for them. And then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and grungify or wear everything out by choosing a roughen and then going ahead and choosing a texture and minus fronting all with a texture. And then that is how you do it. That's how the sort of the practical side of it. The next thing you want to know is the space in between things. Now, a lot of people I think have the problem or think that design is all about, or sorry, should I say typography is all about the way that it sort of is or the things that are on there how they look that is sort of true in some cases but the most important thing that uh, designers think of is the spacing between each thing 
Uh, I'm not really looking for the, the neatness of this um, poster here because I'm looking for the space in between them and how everything interacts. Now I know that the human mind likes symmetry uh, so I'm sort of going off a symmetrical bat here of I like the whole curvature of this, the symmetry of this, I like it how it's straight down the line and they're sort of the same on each side. So the idea of what I've done here is I've made sure the spacing is correct. Now I think this could be spaced down a bit more, like so. But the great thing about using Illustrator rather than Photoshop is that you can just select these things and then move them down. And you have different elements. You don't have to keep selecting layers. As you can see here, I'm just on one layer uh, with loads of other layers inside this one. And then loads of sub-layers inside sub-layers and you can see it goes absolutely crazy. But it's great that we can just go and click on what we need to use. So that is basically the first part of this. I'm going to do another part of this, but I hope it helps. Um, main thing to realize about sort of typography posters is the spacing between them uh, and the way that things interact. And not leaving much space uh, for the eye. You want the eye to be sort of filled, but not too filled, but you want to make it look all nice. But you'll get what I mean when you start going along with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'm going to be doing the tutorial that I said I would do last time in a few weeks time because I'm still trying to finish it and make sure it looks great and I need to work out how I did it again uh, because there's certain parts in there when I worked it out that I've forgotten how to do. But I hope you guys have a nice day and I'll catch you in my next video. Also Prophesy Apparel is bringing out new clothing soon and uh, you can go and pick them up at prophesyapparel.co.uk. Everything has been designed by me. Um, and it all looks pretty nice. I'm being big headed, but it looks pretty nice. If you want to support me, go to Patreon, check out some of my live streams. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.